Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about polycythemia rubra vera or PRV. So what is polycythemia rubra vera? Well it is a clo clonal pluripotent stem cell disorder that results in increased red blood cell or RBC production. PRV is also known as maladie de Vaquez and it is a chronic myeloproliferative neoplasm so it involves myeloid cells. So if we look at this little diagram here on the right, we see that if myeloid cells are affected, we can get increases in red blood cells, but we can also get increases in platelets and white blood cells. So we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. Now, polycythemia rubervera affects all populations and it affects all age group, but the median age of um, individuals that are diagnosed or that suffer from this uh, condition is around 60 years old. And again, as I mentioned before, all ages are affected, so about a quarter of cases present before the age of 50. Now, what is the pathophysiology of polycythemia rubervera? Well, it is red blood cells that grow independently of erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is the hormone that is involved in controlling red blood cell production. And typically it involves a mutation in JAK2 gene. And JAK2 um, is involved uh, with the receptors uh, for erythropoietin, um, TPO, IL-3 or interleukin-3 and um, GCSF. So um, Again, as mentioned before, a large majority of patients with PRV have a mutation in JAK2. About uh, over, actually over 95% of patients have a mutation in JAK2. Here is a uh, diagram of an erythropoietin receptor. We see here that JAK2 is involved in regulation of this receptor. But with uh, a mutation in JAK2, this can lead to a constitutive activation of this pathway, even without erythropoietin. And the risk factor is not entirely known. Uh, JAK2 uh, mutations seem to relate to uh, ionizing radiation or some sort of toxin like benzene that can lead to a mutation in this uh, gene. And overall, the main pathophysiology, the main effects of polycythemia rubervera are due to the expansion of blood volume due to the increased red blood cell production. So this leads to in, an expansion of the blood volume and an increased viscosity of blood overall. So what are some of the blood findings in polycythemia rubervera patients? Well because polycythemia rubervera leads to an increase in red blood cell production, we see an increase in hemoglobin levels with a median of around 184 grams per liter. And because there's an increase in red blood cell production and increase in hemoglobin, we see an increase in hematocrit with a median of around 55% in patients with PRV. Because there are so many red blood cells, red blood cell destruction also increases and this leads to an increase in lactate dehydrogenase. Lactate dehydrogenase spills out of destroyed red blood cells and we see an increase in this uh, marker of lactate dehydrogenase. We also, see, we also see increase in platelet count. Now, um, the median in PRV patients is around 466,000 per microliter. Now, we see an increase in platelet count because this is a myeloproliferative disorder. And remember in the first diagram I showed you is that red blood cells, platelets, and leukocytes are all um, downstream of a myeloid stem cell. And this leads to an increase in leukocyte count as well. Uh, with a, usually a median of around 10,400 cells per microliter. And if we were to look at a blood smear, typically when we see a blood smear of a patient with PRV, we see an excess of normochromic, normocytic red blood cells. But if a patient is unable to um, adequately compensate for red blood cell production by increasing their iron um, capacity, we may have hyperchromic microcytic red blood cells due to iron deficiency. So what are some of the signs and symptoms of PRV? Well, some, well, many of the signs and symptoms of PRV relate to its 
uh, ability to expand and, uh, expand the blood volume and increase blood viscosity. One of the um, signs and symptoms of PRV is erythromelalgia, and it's simply a swelling um, or increased redness of of parts of the body. And this is a picture here where um, an individual has erythromelalgia of their forearm. Now, patients also can have hypertension due to the increase in blood volume. So this leads to an increase in blood pressure. Patients can also have headaches. They can have dizziness. They can have weakness, sweating, and they can have weight loss. And there's also increased risk of gout in these patients. And remember, um, gout is due to uric acid levels. So you get gout because there's just so many blood cells. There's so much um, removal of blood cells as well that you can get a um, increase in uric acid levels. This can lead to gouty arthritis and tophi. Tophi are simply bulbous collections on patients' ears and um, usually on their hands as well. Patients also experience puritis or itching, and this is one of the most common symptoms. And um, it's typically after a bath. So if you hear a patient say that they get really itchy after having a bath, then this can be a huge indicator or a very important um, hint that the patient may have polycythemia rubrifera. And as I mentioned before, it's very common. Patients can also have splenomegaly. Splenomegaly, again, um, because the spleen is involved in removal of red blood cells, if a patient has so many red blood cells, the spleen will enlarge to compensate to remove even more red blood cells. So that's why we get splenomegaly in these patients. And there's also an increased risk of thrombosis. And you can imagine that's because there's an increase in uh, platelet count in these patients. So how do we diagnose PRV? Well, we typically use the WHO criteria to diagnose PRV. And here's a table of the um, criteria for diagnosis. So there are three major criteria and one minor criteria. So an in individual is diagnosed with polycythemia rubrivera if they if they have all three major criteria, so all three major criteria, so that would include an in, a higher than 165 or uh, 165 grams per liter or 16.5 grams per deciliter in men and over 160 grams per liter in women and with the hematocrit over 49% in men or over 48% in women. If um, and the second major criteria is um, bone marrow findings consistent with pleomorphic mega, megakaryocytes. So these are the cells that um, produce platelets. And the third major criteria is the presence of JAK2 mutation. Again, JAK2 mutation is present in over 95% of patients with polycythemia rubrivera. So if a patient has all three of these criteria, this would be considered a diagnosis of uh, polycythemia rubrivera. However, if we're unable to get this third criteria, another way to diagnose polycythemia rubrivera by WHO criteria is to use the first two major criteria. So again, hemoglobin and hematocrit that are high, bone marrow findings uh, consistent with pleomorphic megakaryocytes, but also with the minor criteria. So um, subnormal serum erythropoietin level. So if we were to check the erythropoietin level, it's very low. So this would indicate that this is an erythropoietin independent process. So again, the two ways to diagnose polycythemia rubrivera is to either get all three major criteria, uh, high hemoglobin, high hematocrit, bone marrow findings of pleomorphic megakaryocytes, and presence of JAK2 mutation, or the other way to diagnose uh, PRV is to have two major, the first two major criteria, high hemoglobin, high hematocrit, pleomorphic megakaryocytes, and one minor criteria, subnormal serum erythropoietin levels. So these are the three, um, or these are the two ways to diagnose uh, PRV.
So once we've made the diagnosis of PRV, how do we treat it? One of the main ways to treat PRV is through phlebotomy. Phlebotomy is simply just um, a bloodletting. And usually we want to target a hematocrit of less than 45%. So remember that the diagnostic criteria, or one of the major criteria, was that um, in men it's greater than 49% hematocrit, in women it's greater than 48%. So we want to bring that down to less than 45% hematocrit. So typically this may um, involve giving blood um, every um, so often to ensure we target hematocrit less than 45%. Another way to, um, or another uh, treatment um, involved in PRV is acetyl salicylic acid or ASA. And this is simply because of the thrombosis risk involved with PRV. Another treatment is hydroxyurea. And another treatment is JAK2 inhibitors. Um, and one of the JAK2 inhibitors is ruxolitinib. So these all can be treatments of uh, polycythemia rubrifera to attempt to reduce uh, the um, red blood cell content uh, and reduce hem hematocrit uh, levels as well. Anyways guys, I hope you found this lesson helpful. That was a um, lesson on polycythemia rubrifera. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.